Carl, I, I can't believe you're actually, you've fallen into the Corey trap now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, you know what I discovered, though? I didn't know that other people had discovered the Corey thing, that if you talk about Corey and you post it, you will get views. There are people. I started. I watch your guys' clips on YouTube, and now the algorithm is showing me Corey clips all over YouTube. So yes, uh, I didn't know it, but I see that there are other shows or or people who've discovered this and and have you know maybe uh, worn them all out or something. We just got started, and honestly, I had no idea until I'm like, wait, why is it every time we post Corey Feldman, it gets six times as many views? What is going on? But it just it is what it is. So anyway, Carl, you found him on a podcast. Yeah, so you guys know who Harland Williams is, a, a oh, yeah. comic, very funny guy. Love that guy. Yes, he has a show called Harland Highway Podcast. And to your point, Drew, this was an interview he did with Corey Feldman August 8th. So just a couple of months ago. This video has 80,000 views. Harland's YouTube channel only has 54,000 subs. Wow. So it's outperforming. Yeah. Everything else on his channel. And I want to say it's a good thing there is not a fact checker on the Harlan Highway because Corey says some crazy stuff. Like he claims a billion people watched him on the Today Show. <laughs> One <Yeah>. billion people. <laughs> well, also, and I've been kind of obsessed with Corey Feldman for a while now, as you guys have. I remember when that doc came out that he was going to finally take down all of Hollywood oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and name names. Yes. I was one of the people who paid the 20 bucks to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> take that to the no way. Use it on the creep off or something. And it was just a nothing burger. There was nothing going on. Wow. I had no idea. Did it just yeah. cut off and freeze as he described on the Harlan Highway? No, it didn't. I, I watched it after the fact. I wasn't there for the premiere like he was talking about. Okay, I, you know, on that movie, you know, which is going to call out the child molesters of Hollywood, and he claims that they bombed the server and they overloaded it and froze it, and then he said they stole the stream, sold tickets for $10 more with a copycat website and sold DVDs. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was suggesting that they were doing it to protect the people he was calling out, which I think is Charlie Sheen, but they'd already called out much bigger people like Les Moonves and Harvey Weinstein and Matt Lauer. Why would anyone be protecting Charlie Sheen with this giant conspiracy? Well, yeah, that's the funny thing, too, because he never names Charlie Sheen on this interview with Harlan Williams, but I know that's who he's talking about. Yeah. And Harlan is like, so is this like an A-list celebrity? He goes, well, he used to be. It's like, yeah, who the fuck would even care? Charlie Sheen's already destroyed his reputation. No, if they've What's taken the down those those giant people, why would they be protecting this this person who's a former A-lister? It's just, it makes absolutely no sense. Well, Drew, since you brought this up, I was going to go in order, but let's skip ahead because it does get, this interview starts off silly and goofy. We'll get into some of that stuff, but it does get pretty heavy. It was all if fun. To, it was all if good. If you want to start with my track 14, this is where he's talking about how, like you said, not only do they shut down the movie, they shut down his ability to process payments. They stole the, they, they froze oh. the account so you couldn't buy the tickets, right? So oh that God. means if no more money's coming through, they froze the account on my PayPal account at exactly $666,000 at 8 o'clock. <laughs> wow. Six, six, six. wow. How would you be able to time that so perfectly? I was pre-selling for a month and a half before that night, and somehow it landed at exactly that number. That tells me that they were controlling it the whole time. Why would that? What, why does that mean they couldn't? Okay. <laughs> Mark, they're demons. You didn't know this. I forgot about that. Yes. They're fucking not, Alex Jones level <laughs> stuff right here. Not only a conspiracy, but a demon conspiracy. Six, yes. six. And you know, Carl, he said that he made a promise to his best friend to tell the story. So did he know that Corey Haim was going to OD? Because why wouldn't Corey Haim have just told the story unless he knew he was going to die? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense. The Corey Feldman timeline is wrought with errors. So my, my next track, number 15, this is funny because Corey Feldman is so paranoid. It doesn't mean they're not after him, but he is so paranoid. I mean, he is. What the, the hell that I went through? Two attempts on my life. Uh, they oh put God. spies into my house. <laughs> they literally had people pretending to be band members who were actually there to sabotage me. Oh I mean, God. this this thing went Corey. so deep. 
That's what know, I mean. This is this high marriage, level destroying espionage. My life, destroying everything. I mean, it's just they they did. So and you know what? I just damage. this is for real. Look what the guy puts out. After all that, <laughs> a heart. <laughs> oh God! The way his headphones are on upside down it's is driving me nuts. So it's yeah. so driving me nuts. I'm gonna so try. the entire episode, Brandon, he has to hold his headphones. Because he doesn't want to fuck up his hair. Yeah. He can't just put his headphones on normally because it would mess up his perfect hair. I'm gonna try. So he has to ho hold him like this, and it's so frustrating. Oh, can we? I want to get into this, Mark. Let's okay. let's ease our way into this okay. because I have a lot of questions about this box set. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's on to promote the box set, but let's back up. Uh, let's start with this. This is the fun conversation they start off with. My my track number one. Corey's wearing a necklace that has the number. 22 on it. Oh. We're going to find out why that is. I mean, the whole public knows your ride, your journey, stardom, all, some of Bro, the other I stuff. I know it's hard to believe because yeah. I'm, only, I'm only 22, but well, see that? 22. Wait, what's the uh, significance of that? This is my, my number, 22. It signifies my age. Um, you know, yeah. mentally, mentally, spiritually. Yeah, 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 you know okay, I mean, yeah. You know, mentally yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harlan. <laughs> Harlan's deadpan right there is so, so perfect. And it, I, it comes out that he edits these shows himself. Oh. So you can tell this guy edited this perfectly with his reaction staring at the camera like, well, <laughs> mentally, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, he, he did a great job on this because it, it is very hard to do this when the person is right in front of you and they're saying things like, 22 is his lucky number. He put out the box set, didn't he say, on the 22nd anniversary of his best friend's death? <laughs> so he puts out everything <laughs> on the 22nd of the month. Okay. Right. Because 22 <laughs> is his lucky number. And in my, my track number two, it's funny because remember that, um, that documentary we were talking about was a big deal for him. For some reason, that got put out on March 10th. But other than that, <laughs> everything gets put out on the 22nd. Um, did you find all the uh, incredible work that went into the box set in terms of baking the original tapes, you know, in order to oh, get the, the perfect uh, don't original? Don't get ahead of me here, Drew. Okay, this, okay. We, we got to go through this because there's so much bullshit going on during this interview. It's so fantastic. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, let's let's play my, my track number two, just talking about how 22 is his lucky number here. No, every, everything I put out, literally, if you watch the history, I put everything out on the 22nd of whatever month yeah uh i mean i you know i released that documentary it was like yeah you know on 222 we sold the tickets and then on like uh i think it was march 10th we had to put it out because it was a year it was a 10 year anniversary of uh, my best friend's death which is the significant significance of that but we started selling the yeah. tickets on 222 20. i put it out in the year 2020 <laughs> because it was a 22. So uh stupid. my book has 22 chapters uh <laughs> my last album angelic to the core was a double disc with 22 songs wow i mean it's just it's it's a thing it's if a you thing. ever kill yourself you're gonna use a 22 <laughs> rifle it's not but it's not good. Right. Well, I'm just trying there. to yeah, thanks, running thanks, with thanks, your Jerry. theme. <laughs> <laughs> His reaction shots are the best. Oh, Arlen no. is so funny he on this. Really I remember we we watched Corey Feldman with uh, Blossom. Oh yeah, my few months ago, and she's so unfunny and just made the conversation so boring. Harlan does a fantastic job. Will you agree, Drew? This oh, is yeah, no, I thought it was episode. great. I, I that, did. Look at that shot of him right there. <laughs> it's, it's so great. But this just goes to show you that it's him. The numbers are in his head. He's doing everything 22, 222, 2020. So obviously he came up with that. They released the, uh, they bought all the tickets on 666. That's all in his head. He's crazy. I don't think the 20, has 22 really been that lucky for him? I don't think. No! He, when he explains his life, he's been molested. He's, they've tried to kill him. All these bad things happen. He's like, yeah, but 22 is a real lucky number for him. They me. infiltrated like, his band. They, I mean, infiltrated his band? That's that's a pretty extreme measure to go to. <laughs> that terrible band. All right. So the whole point of him being on the show is to promote the box set. The box set's been out for over a year at this point. And... I think I remember him saying he only had like 200 of them made or 300 of them made. So I guess they're not selling. <laughs> I know. It's... And you know, even on his, his cameos, he promotes the box set. He's yes. just talking to one person. <laughs> so he's desperate to sell these things. And he's such a cornball. Play my uh, my number three here. We introduced the box set. You yeah. know, it's like I've got very exciting things happening. We've got this box set out, which we're here to talk Can about. Can I hold this up? Hold, hold it, the, baby. Yeah, hold look it. at this thing. Oh, this yeah, this is some of the it? best packaging I've ever seen in That's my life. That's what she said. Oh. Hey! 
Michael, 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 and Carl, he comes back with that's what she said later in the podcast when when uh, Harlan says, I was going to stuff the mask inside. And he says, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's my it's my track sixteen. This is the problem with Drew Ross and Michelle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Track sixteen. You know. You know what? Actually, you know what? We're gonna do. Open the lid. Open. No, the... no, no. It's not. It's oh, not a can't. full box. It's I was gonna stuff box. the mask oh, inside. Oh well, that's what she said. Or he said. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> stuff the mask? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't That's... make any sense. He's such a cornball. It's so bad. <laughs> now, okay, so this box set is called Corey Feldman's Love Left 2.1. Why is it a 2.2? It goes oh, over yeah, the whole thing about theme. 22 is his number, and then it's 2.1? Uh, fair question. If only we so. could get it to Harlan. The, the best is, I, I think you're going to enjoy this one, Drew. I'm sure you remember when Harlan asked him how much this thing costs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> this is so, track number four, this is so funny. Wow. Nothing like this has ever been paid. How much is something like this? How it much goes are they for the low, low price. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Of, uh, what is it? I think it's like around 300, 350, something Whoa, like that. Yeah, really? It's, yeah, it's expensive. Dollars? It's expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so... I love Harlan's reaction. He's like, whoa, what are you nuts? <laughs> but he later says something about it's it's uh, 250 but if he signs it, maybe it's 350 He really he acts like he doesn't know. I think he's so embarrassed by the price that he just acts like he doesn't know. But if he signed it, it would be another 100 <laughs> All right. It's so ridiculous. It's it's unsigned. It's 275 If he signs it, it's 350 <laughs> Either way, the shipping on it is $140 domestic. What? <laughs> what is he delivering it himself? <laughs> $140 bucks to, ship, to ship this thing. And, and then it says if you're in Europe or Australia, it's going to cost a lot more than that. Oh, my God. Right, let's pull up that, that picture that I sent you okay. uh, okay. of the box set. I want to analyze this because... This is so all over the fucking place. The the marketing here is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Who would buy this? So, all right. So let me just explain this to people. So it says, Love Left 2.1. It's shaped like a heart. It looks like 60s style with the colors and maybe 70s. He's got uh, someone wailing on a guitar in the upper left. Then yep. there's oh, yeah. a, a hot babe underneath that guy. Mm -hmm. Corey's in the middle. with. He looks contemplative. Mm -hmm. And then in the upper right... <laughs> There's a black man holding a side that says, I can't breathe. What? And a police officer aiming at the back of his head. What the <laughs> fuck? Is that what that is? That's what that is? Yeah. I did not see that, Carl. Oh Great observation. God. What the hell? Well, and underneath that is a woman with a knife who's stabbing somebody. I, I don't know if that's supposed to be Corey's head. That might be one of the angels. Uh, no uh, one was shot for, for having an I can't breathe sign. The guy <laughs> no. died because he couldn't breathe. <laughs> oh my God. It's crazy. I don't understand what the, uh, the message is here, especially because what throws me off the most is the guy wailing on the guitar. <laughs> like, what are, is this a political message or is it just a cool rock album? I guess it's, no. it's pretty cool. What does it say on his guitar there? Is it says Daniel? That it looks like Daniel. It does look like I'm Daniel. Sure. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Hmm. What a horrible design. I can't believe he thought this was good. <laughs> Carl, I, I think you're a good person to ask. What would be the M.O. of one of the guitarists in the Corey Feldman band? How down on your luck do you have to be to take that gig? Or is that maybe, does it get you somewhere else? I, I love that you pointed out, you guys were going back and watching old concert footage. It's the same people yes. in his band for all these years. I can't imagine the first time they book a show at a minor league ballpark and you're playing in the atrium, like <laughs> between innings. I'm oh, quitting God. that band. But guys, this is not working out. We're not doing well. No, I mean they did play Riot Fest. I mean they do get a good gig once in a blue moon. But then people there mostly laugh at you. I still think they should get the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> I, I want to start a petition. I want to get this done. Oh, I can just It'd see them amazing. chanting, here he comes, the, the comeback, comeback king. king at the Super Bowl. Here he comes, the comeback <laughs> and then, king. And then who knows what kind of malfunction they'll have technically. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, you would not want him to have any extra help He's for the Super Bowl. He's definitely yelling at the girl with the laptop. Yeah, oh, yeah. And the screen's not going to work. And he'll explain the screen. <laughs>
He'll he be calling out the officials. <laughs> what about that play in the second quarter? That was definitely pass interference. He's all mad about the game. That'd be great. I'd love that. I wish it would be 22 to 22 at half, too. It would um, blow his mind. <laughs> Mark, where was the where was the gig yesterday? We were playing the gig from. Was it? It was overseas somewhere. Oh, Taiwan, the Taiwan gig. What what would be the math of being able to uh, his band being able to afford to play in Taiwan? That's absurd. There's so, no way you could draw enough people for I, a show. I, I didn't get a chance to mention it yesterday, but watching the video, I don't know if you noticed that there's a um, you know a stand like a speaker stand there mm -hmm. with multiple mics. So I felt like it was some kind of off brand award show. And he oh. was the entertainment for whatever this Taiwanese award show was. Okay, so they paid for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just to have Corey Feldman there. No way. Uh, you guys are pronouncing <laughs> China incorrectly. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> the official stance of WATP. They don't recognize them. <laughs> they don't recognize that, whatever you're talking about. All right, so speaking of his live shows, he's talking about how he puts on these shows. And it's art. And the way he knows that is by getting reactions out of people. This is my track number five. I love entertaining. I love putting on a good show. Yeah. You know? So that's what it's all about. It's, it's about giving your best and doing, you know, just like you do on stage every night. It's the same thing. You yeah. know, whether you're telling jokes or you're <laughs> making people cry or you're, what? you know, making, <laughs> oh. making them dance. You know, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Or even if you make them walk out of the room. It really doesn't matter. The point is you're doing something yeah. and you're getting a reaction. That's what art is about. That's a low bar right there. It People really leave as you're performing. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> it's art. He we really, nailed it. He really knows how to turn lemon into lemonade, right? He <laughs> really does. Thing. It does get him over the art bar, which is the most important thing. He barely why? makes it over, but he gets over. Why does he bring that up? Why is he? He's acting like he's making people cry at these shows. He's definitely not. Uh, maybe <laughs> some, there's some dancing going on. Hey, hey give him a break. He's only 22. He's got a lot to learn. That's true. That's mentally. Mentally, yes. <laughs> So then, speaking of his immaturity, Harlan decides to read some of Corey's lyrics to him. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. Yeah. All right. Everyone knows that my name ain't Stacy. Mm. I like angels. That's my thing. Everybody wants to buy you a ring. But I tell you now, now's my thing. Ding, ding, a ring, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that's awful. Oh, that's so bad. He even made Corey laugh. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's our great lyrics, Corey. <laughs> God, Harlan's right. fucking great on this. He man. did a great He's job. So funny. He did. He's so funny. He, keep, he keeps Corey engaged. Uh, he, he goes along with all this crazy nonsense, which is good. I got to do that with Corey, obviously, but he's still goofed up to his face. Now, Corey's going to bring up the fact that he was a not a child actor, a child slave. Oh, wow. Wow. I was basically yeah. a child slave uh, who was put into the industry against my will. At three years old. I mean, wait, so that McDonald's commercial, the Christmas McDonald's <laughs> commercial, you were like forced I mean, a Christmas I, baby. Let's put it this way. I wasn't forced. Like, they didn't shove me in front of the camera and say, stay there, I'll kill you. But, you know, it was more like, wow. You know, look, let's put it very simply. At three years old, are you making career choices? No. At three years old, are you deciding what the rest of your life should be? No. At three years old, are you thinking about what your job, career, or profession should be? No, but at three years old, I am thinking about McDonald's. I'll tell <laughs> you that there much. You so the point is, is that, uh, yeah. you know, my parents didn't really ask if this is what I wanted. They just put me in it. And the point is, once you're famous, there's no erasing that. Yeah, you, you just get take sucked into the, into the slipstream, right? right? Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> but by, by that definition, all three-year-olds are slaves. Yeah. No matter what you force them to do. Yeah, your parents right. decide all, everything for you. It's called being a child, not being yeah. a slave. I want to mention, too, That's that... That's insulting <laughs> to all slaves, what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny that uh, Corey, like Stuttering John, remembers all his great moments because he even recalls that that McDonald's commercial he did at age three won a Clio Award. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. I had to look that commercial up. Have you guys seen it from 1976? No. No. I watched it because they were talking about it quite a bit. It's a 60 second spot. And I forgot TV was so different in the seventies. It takes forever. It's a like Corey. The commercial. He's this little kid. He, yeah. He, he wakes up in the middle of the night and he gets a, a 50 cent gift certificate to McDonald's and you watch him in real time, walk it all the way downstairs to where they're putting out cookies for Santa. Cause he wants to give Santa 50 cents off. A big man. Oh, I remember so this nice. spot. I remember this one. Oh, <laughs> this wow. takes forever. <laughs> what a great <laughs> actor, though. 
He turns on the light. Would a three-year-old really know the certificate was sitting in there? Well, he just found it. He had this planned all along. I mean, look at that poor slave. Every step <laughs> we're watching. Why? Yeah, you guys, the edge of your seat, man. What's he gonna do with this fifty-cent coupon? <laughs> Is he gonna wrap it up and give it to someone else? The Slow down. Donald's gift certificates. Fifty cents each, or a book of ten for five dollars. Something special for someone special. Oh, he stole Santa's cookie. Yeah, what a dick. Huh? Oh, my Lord. <sighs> and that launched a one hell of a career. <laughs> sure Hi. did. That one a so, Cleo? A low bar. It's not, it's not a good commercial. So what he's saying here is that he was forced into celebrity by his parents. There was, uh, there was no way to get out. He had no other choice. And you would think, because I know you guys were talking about, uh, what's his name, Barry? Barry Williams. Barry Williams. Barry yeah. Williams. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I know you guys were talking about him and how he's like really trying to hold on to any type of fame and notoriety in any way that he can. He's in Branson. Do that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So the, this idea that as soon as you're a celebrity at the age of three or seven or whatever Corey's complaining about, now he has to do this the rest of his life. Well, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's slavery, not indentured uh, servitude. It's, it's just not the case, but this is what he says in uh, track number eight. He explains this. Oh, okay. Uh, Go back. Yeah. And it's not like you can do, like, you know, 15 number one films and then go work at Blockbuster or yeah. work at Taco Bell or Why whatever. Not? And right? you were like, in, like, you're... number one films. You're in a lot of them. Right. Can, can you disappear? To, don't some of these celebrities kind of slip off the radar? Well, they do. Maybe if it, at, you know, 18, I said, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Maybe. Or 22. But even still, it's pretty hard when you've got a legacy of those kinds of films. It's, yeah. We're not talking about, you know, DC Cab or something. We're talking yeah, yeah. about... Wow, yeah. that's a ripe one. <laughs> <laughs> what's What's funny about this exchange is that Corey is saying, you know, I was a, a slave when I was younger. My parents put me into this, and then I was so good at it that I was a huge movie star. And so what am I going to do, get a normal job like a normal person? But then after that, he explains that once he got into his early 20s, he was in all these B movies and crappy things just to keep working. Because his manager told him, you got to show that you're still working. You got to show that you're still out there in order to keep getting roles. So he had to work very hard at maintaining his celebrity. <laughs> He's talking to both sides of his mouth here. I agree with Harlan. I think I think celebrities that are, are child stars that are celebrities, quote unquote, or the reverse, they can just disappear. Some of them yeah. do just disappear. Mm -hmm. He made he it sound like, oh, my God, of course not. Blockbuster. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I some agree. of them really fall on terribly hard times or some have normal lives. It is it happens more often than not. Yeah, when was the last time we saw Dana Plato? Right. I mean, she just disappeared. Well, she did die, didn't she? What? <laughs> I think she did. No, I know. In the 90s. <laughs> Good example, though. So <laughs> my, yes, uh, my track never died. Corey's talking about how great it is that he does everything himself, you know, in the in the digital age. And then Harlan being hilarious brings it back to his box set again. <laughs> and thank God we're in the the digital age. We're now, yeah. you know, I, look, I own my own label. I have distribution through Sony. And, wow. and, you know, we make our own stuff, our own product in our studio. We created this, this box set from scratch. We're back I to mean, this again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, folks. For $300, you can have everything that was ever made. Even the animals from Noah's Ark are in here. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. When he does announce the price, I didn't pull this clip, but Drew, you probably remember. He does announce the price. And, you know, they're like, wow, that seems really expensive. Then he goes, yeah, but there's also stickers in there and guitar picks. <laughs> it's it. just like so much random shit in this thing. <laughs> I would like to see the accounting of Corey's own label that he owns. Yeah. Is there oh, anything on that label that makes any money? That sounds ridiculous. Is there anything other than Corey on there? Do there we know? can't be. Who would sign no. his label? The Angels. Maybe they have their own solo stuff. Yeah. He's I, not doing the Angels anymore. He's moved past that, Mark. Oh. Come on. 
I don't think there's much income there. And and I would love to know how many of those box sets they've actually sold. I mean, because he's been promoting this thing nonstop. He'll use any opportunity. When he's singing in front of 40 people at a pool, he's promoting his box <laughs> set. We've seen I'm it. I'm not even sure if the box set actually exists because he doesn't let Harlan open that one because he says, oh, no, it doesn't have the stuff in it. And if you go on his website, it still says you can pre-order it. So I think what? he's waiting for enough of them to be sold to actually make them. Oh. I don't know. Oh, wow. that's interesting. Yeah, could be. No, it was. I thought it was really awkward when he said, no, don't open it up. Because why would yeah. there be nothing in there? Why would you bring in an empty box? It's bizarre. So <laughs> Harlan brings up his relationship <laughs> with Michael Jackson. Mm. And uh, I guess Harlan didn't realize that Corey is very protective of Michael Jackson and his reputation. And so he does not like words like Jacko. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, boy. Right, track 10. Track 10, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I have a question I got to ask, because you might be the only one who can answer this. Okay. You just said it. you were buddies with Jacko, right? Jackson. Michael but, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. You were at the Neverland Ranch, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Can you tell this audience once and for all what the term she means? Yes. It's an exuberant feeling of self-indulgence on the dance floor, specifically. What? Huh? It was a joke question, and Corey decides to answer it seriously. <laughs> oh, my way. God. <laughs> there was no definition for that. It just sounded good. Well, that's when we all learned something. My, uh, my track number 11, this conversation continues. Oh, great. And we actually learned what Shimona means. <laughs> is, is it Shimona? Or is it... I thought it was she no. with a C H. No. What is it? No. E -he. E -he. E I think it's she. -he. No, no. You're, you're, you're thinking of Shimon. Shimon. What? What? Shimon. 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 What's Shimon? <laughs> well, it's come on. But it's so like what? slang, you know? It's like so he just changed come on? That's all it is. <laughs> Shimon? It's simple. It's, you oh. know, that's genius, right? It's just that one fine little no. detail that it's changes stupid. it from... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's Shamon. Shamon. It's not Shamon. Isn't it Shamon? <laughs> Are we having the same conversation right now? Kind Here, what of. does that <laughs> I don't think it's Shamon. Shamon. <laughs> stupid. I know. <laughs> Most perfect response. Yeah, because it's it so funny because it's genius. Because oh, it's stupid. <laughs> it's so funny. So he continues this this line of questioning about Michael Jackson and the fact he has a reputation of molesting children. And Corey Feldman was a cute child, so it seems like maybe that's why there was a relationship there to begin with. This is track twelve talking about that. And you you were never you never felt weird around him or there's no like I mean, weird I did stuff. I mean the time when he made me wear a dress to dinner, I thought that was a little strange. But... <laughs> exactly. Okay. Then he said she yeah. and, like, yeah. <laughs> no. and where did that finger go? Hey, oh. hey, hey. Yeah, that one. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Herlin's great. That one. Um, yeah. Did you pull the clip where Corey said, which he said a few times, you need to read my book? Yeah. Okay. So I was just about to say that, Drew. It's so funny. My next note is multiple times Corey goes, well, you got to read my book. And finally, Harlan goes, I didn't even know you wrote a book. I'm talking to you now. <laughs> <laughs> just answered. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. He had earlier said he didn't even know he really had a music career, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was really funny. He goes, oh, this isn't just like a side thing you're doing as a goof? Is that real? <laughs> this guy's got a box set. I didn't even know he made music. <laughs> I, I never, ever do this on this show. I recommend people go watch this entire. Uh, it's about an hour long. It's very funny. It'll it be linked in the notes. Well worth it. But, you know, yes. Arlen had the greatest answer to the read my book thing is, that, look, I'm not going to read. I didn't even know you had a book and you're right here. Why just tell me now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, I hate when people do that. They're like, well, wh what does he call it? The choreography? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Choreography, a memoir. Yeah. It's like, why don't you read the choreography? I'm like, I got better shit to do. I think Arlen even says, like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, and you're right here to give me the highlights. Instead of reading the whole damn thing. Uh, I, I have one more clip on here. It's actually not a fun one. So it's not a great way to end this segment, but why not? So we're talking about his doc and we're talking about his best friend, Corey Haim, being uh, raped by Charlie Sheen. Again, they don't mention Charlie Sheen, but in my track 13, uh, he pretty much mentions him. Is this Corey Haim? Yes. 
And he was molested by the same... He was raped by this man. Wow. So At the, 13 years old. Do you think there are other victims as well, or was it just oh, you two? Be. Oh, no, there's got to be. I'm so Well, man, Well, first of all, tough. as far as from that that's person, tough. I'm sure there's plenty of other victims that they've silenced. I know there is, because this man has a record of beating, stabbing, shooting, strangling his ex-girlfriends, because obviously God. he doesn't like women very much. Uh, <sighs> but that's another story altogether. Shooting? But why... Yeah! Not? Why would he be raping Corey Haim? He's... Yeah, he likes is women. Is there any evidence that he likes men in a sexual way? I never saw any indication ever. I know. Obviously, he doesn't like women. I'm like, we talk about Charlie Sheen? What do you mean? I think he likes women a lot. Yeah. yeah. He didn't shoot any women. He has a who's dated who with 48 women on it, and I don't see any dudes in there. So mm. he, I had to look this up, guys. Kelly Preston. Yeah, I remember who, the story. Who, of course, uh, married a guy who had, wanted nothing to do with her. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know what her deal <laughs> But... She, her and Charlie were dating, and the story was she had picked up a pair of his pants off the floor that had a revolver in it, mm-hmm. which dropped out of the ground, discharged, hit the toilet, and then a piece of the toilet hit her in the wrist, and she had to go to the hospital for it. Wow. That <laughs> seems pretty nuts, right? That seems like an excuse for something else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sounds like BS. That sealed, I slipped and hit the doorknob, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know what? Uh, one of my favorite revelations in the interview, and, and I, I'm like Carl, I think it's well worth watching the whole thing, was that Corey starts talking about his dad. Most importantly, his, his parents were mean to him. They fought with each other. His dad, of course, abused him. But his dad was in the entertainment business, and by being in the entertainment business, he meant that he was in the third iteration of the Strawberry Alarm Clock, a one-hit wonder uh, which did Incense and Peppermints, but he was not in the band when they wrote Incense and Peppermints. <laughs> but he was in the third iteration of the band after that. Oh, yeah. yeah that is a very loose of... connection well, to celebrity. Yeah, at, at that point, I think it was like called Strawberry Starship or something. Like, what's the <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why is that band still going? Who gives a shit? <laughs> I know. Yeah, just, so uh, that, was, that was funny because they were complaining that if you look up who Corey Feldman's dad is, all the information on the Internet is incorrect. So Corey wanted to set the record straight. Hmm. OK. Uh, so how's the Dabbleverse going, Carl? All right. So I want to talk to you about this because, Drew, you know that I'm doing a, uh, a weekly roundtable now on my channel. Well, actually, it bounced around to different channels, but on my channel a couple of times, Point Dabble Point. And we usually get five of us together to discuss the week of Stuttering John. Well, John made a big announcement. He has once again left the Internet. Oh, no way. He, he made this announcement on Joey C's show. So I, I have a track here, 17, where he's talking about leaving the Internet again. Just real quick, I'll set this up. What happened was John started putting his music on a loop. You were talking about this. Yeah. Started putting his music on a loop in the background so the people couldn't clip it because then he could he could strike them with a copyright strike. Why why wouldn't they nail him for a copyright strike? Because how would they know immediately that music was his? Wouldn't the wouldn't their algorithm just know it was copyrighted? Well, he could actually physically go in. You could strike oh. anyone for copyright if you don't own the copyright. Oh, okay. Hmm. So he would go in and strike me or Shuli or whoever I was see. Okay. using it. Now, as I think you pointed out. There are ways to take music out of audio, so I was able to still pull clips. It didn't work at all. But what was great was that Shuli's network got together with this punk band named Seven Seconds, I think it is. And Seven Seconds gave them permission to use one of their songs. So when John was sniping them, they started playing the song, and then John was playing their copyrighted music on his show. So they go, now we can strike you, John. So they beat him at his own game, and he got very upset. (laughs) So that's why he's leaving the Internet. Well, that's what he claims, because I've been on Shuli's show since then. We've been debating whether they should strike him or not. I said definitely not. No. He's not going to learn his lesson either way, so it doesn't matter. Well, you don't want him off the Internet. Correct. I don't, personally. But I think his family does. <laughs> and I think that's what we're going to find out. If, if my, my track 17 here, he's talking about how he's, he's leaving the Internet. I mean, which they, according to the fucking trailer trash show, he said... Fuck you, asshole. Now we're striking you. We have time. Okay. Fine. Then I'll be gone. Joey, not only are you not going to see me podcasting, you're not going to see me on any show, and right. you're not going to probably see me even tweeting. Oh, right. Which, oh, that, no. that, that, they're, they're just, so, I don't understand why fine. anybody would do that to you. Fine. Uh, now you think you guys, heard, 
He stopped playing, guys. He's he's no, this serious. is not reverse psychology. Right. This is not. I'm not doing child psychology here. I am smelling right you're now. serious. I've already had this discussion with my son, and he said, "Dad, he goes, it's better for your mental health to just stop doing this shit because these people are fucking assholes." Yeah, I, and I, you know I what? Know about yeah. yeah, I'll be gone. I don't, I don't need this fuck. I, I don't need it. But I'll tell you, I'll get the last laugh. They think they're getting me. No, they're fucking themselves. Right. Because all my this. shit is private. Right. Yeah, and I, you're not going to have see, any clips. I will see done. a lot of people get mad about you taking down, and I go, I'm glad he did that. You know, you This will thing be down. my last show. <laughs> show. Yeah. No, well. No, well, no way. well, he has nuked his Patreon. He's taken everything down. Uh -oh. He put a note up there saying he won't be back until November 21st or something like that. I forget the date he put in there. And uh, he's taken everything off of his YouTube, except for just the, the bare minimum stuff he had up there be when he left last time. And uh, that was the most interesting part about that is his son told him, Dad, you got to get off the Internet. It's not good for your <laughs> son. <mental state." laughs> That's um, interesting. I think what he's trying to do is he wants to starve Shuley. I think it drives him crazy that Shuley is making money off his stupidity. Correct. And that's why I think he left last time. He left for eight months. Around this time last year was the last time John took his ball and went home. And uh, he's doing it again because he just, and I, I've been saying this, but it really is the best analogy. He is just stepping on every rake in the lawn. <laughs> every single time he takes a step forward, he's getting smashed in the face. And I think at a certain point, he's got to be like, I'm just going to stop walking around the lawn now. This is just not working out. Well, what was, how much money was he making? He was doing like five shows a week, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, maybe six, actually, because he was doing Monday through Saturday. What kind of super chat funds were coming in? Well, all right, I have one more track on your 18. He's going to explain to us he doesn't need that money. Okay. Oh, great. So, Good. all right. <laughs> all right, fucking producer Joe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I'll be gone. And don't like worry. What are you thinking? Don't worry. I got money. I could stay away. I got a pension that I collect every fucking month. I don't need to do this. Was anybody worried? Oh, he's doing the well, Johnny Manziel thing. I like that. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> so he's talking about living off his pension. He just turned 58 years old. Oh, so this he's is, digging, this digging is not in a man early. He should be oh. living off his pension at yeah, this point. Yeah, you gotta point. wait. Yeah. Hmm. So he's talking about, I believe, his uh, Writers Guild pension, which I did some research on this. And when you take that before the age of 65, it reduces the payout every year before you turn 65. So this is greatly reduced from what it would be if he could just earn a living and not have to dip into his pension yet. Um, yeah, I think I think it, it's just he must be watching the super chats going to the Shuley show, the Uncle Rico show, and I yeah. think it's just driving him mad. If only he could have made more on super chats himself, and and not been not been bludgeoned constantly <laughs> because his own super chats were very i mean they just beat him up yeah he would have to read two dollar super chats calling him an idiot oh, right that, that's what his, his life trying to do but honestly i think he was making enough money to make it worthwhile for him because he lost his job as a substitute teacher so he can't mm. go back to that so i'm actually a little bit surprised that he's uh, quitting right now i think it has a lot more to do with maybe the family situation and his son going yeah. dad we we gotta we got to get your help. This is not going well, well for you, buddy. Every time he threatens someone for saying something about his his uh, his trans uh, child or any of his kids, he, by bringing it up himself, he only draws more attention yeah. to it ten times as much. Yeah, I've been bringing this up lately because John keeps bringing up his kids over and over again because he's baiting us. He wants us to say shit about his kids because then he has the moral high ground. So that's not a good thing to do to your family to use them as no. a shield right he's the one that brought them to national tv the tweets and stuff like that he's putting it out there so much but then he always acts like you know you better not do it again or else and then i've never seen what the or else is is there right. ever been an or else no, I know. <laughs> Recently, this guy, Patrick Melton, who does a show called Nobody Likes Onions. Yeah. He went off on John's kids real hard. Oh, really? You know, similar to like what Anthony Cumia did about a year ago. Oh, boy. And so John's just bringing this shit on to himself. He's asking for it. 
I'm not taking the bait, but some people are just like, all right, I'll lay into your kids. I don't care. <laughs> so Why did Patrick Melton lay into his kids? I don't get it. Well, John got very mad at Patrick Melton because <laughs> this is a funny story. Patrick Melton and John never got along. But Patrick Melton also hates Shuley. So John goes, oh, you hate Shuley. I hate Shuley. That means we're friends. friends. That means we're friends. Come on my show. So John sent Patrick Melton a link to StreamYard. And the way that it works in the world of StreamYard, you get a link and boom, you can go on somebody's show just like that. So what Patrick Melton did, because he doesn't like John, is he put the StreamYard link in his Discord server <laughs> so oh. that hundreds or th not thousands of people oh. all have access to go on John's show. <laughs> so yeah. someone goes on John's show pretending to be someone else. I think we talked about this. Yeah. And uh, and it was, you know, uh, scat porn. <laughs> someone yelling the N-word over and over again. Oh and John's God. channel got suspended for a week <laughs> over it. So him and, him and Patrick Melton have been feuding since then. But then I don't understand. So Patrick Melton got the last laugh. So why would he then go in on John's kids after well, that? John's been John's been screaming at Patrick Melton being racist and doing all stuff. And Patrick's like, I didn't do any of that stuff. I just gave my listeners the link. They're the ones who did it. I, you should have sent it to me in the first place. Oh, boy. You know, I, as mess. far as his mental health, I would have to believe he's better off not being on the Internet. I mean, his, his son is right. I would totally agree with him. But I thought John kind of thrived on that. But it seems like it's taken it's gotten darker and darker and he seems unhealthier as time goes on. So maybe his kid is probably right. Drew and Michael, I have no idea. Well, <laughs> Drew, I'm with you on that. The last time he took off, I was hoping that he got some help with his drinking, that he got his life in order. And then eight months later, he comes back. He looks worse than ever. <laughs> and he's going off on everyone. He's been reading everything written about him on the Internet the entire time he was off. I'm like, OK, so he actually didn't. This didn't help him at all. So I don't know if it's going to work this time. Either. Well, that's true. Well, there, there was a part of me again. Like, I thought he thrived on that. He's a New Yorker. I think he likes, you know, getting in people's faces and having people get in his. I thought that was. But it, it just doesn't have that fun feel to it. Plus, it feels like. He always loses now, so yeah, maybe that's part of it. Yeah, he's not good at it. Because he thinks he is. You're right about him, him uh, thriving on this. This is what the Howard Stern show is and was when he was on that show. He was the one who was the shitster. He would come in and go, oh, you know what Jackie did last night? Oh, yeah, he's out, he was out drinking real late, and then they'd get into an argument with Jackie. So he loved being the middle of these arguments and all this stuff, but he's not an intelligent enough guy to take on the internet. Most of us aren't. No. So it's just not working out well for him at all. No, and nobody takes his side for any length of time. He still has his show scheduled in Rochester, though, doesn't he? His one-man show? His live show. Yeah. StutteringJohnLive.com is where you can get uh, tickets March 10th. It's a Sunday night at the Comedy Club here in Rochester. Cardiff Electric is helping him run the show. Vinny Paulino, my buddy, is uh, working with him on it as well. So we'll see if that happens. Will the Uncle Rico show continue without John on the Internet? Well, I just checked before I came on today, and it was on. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. They, they, will, they can go going. for a while. I mean, there's a lot of stuff still out there, so I'm sure they can find things for a while. But if he doesn't come back, eventually it's going to be pretty tough. So, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, he, he, but I do believe starving them is probably got to be one of the top reasons because he, he really does not like those guys. Yeah, well, I, I think he'll be back. I think he'll be back before the end of the year. We'll see what happens. Uh, I think he just needs to regroup, figure out what he wants to do. He might, it might help him out to come back and do a show that ignores all of this stuff. Just don't even give it any light. This is what his buddy Richard Ojeda has been telling him <laughs> since he came back. You can't do that. He's going, John, you, you got to stop giving these people uh, air. Like, he, just, he, just can't, he cannot do that. Work. That will yeah, never he, work. <laughs> well, he should. I mean, that'd be my advice to him. Oh, it's not boy. No. All right. Well, great deal. What's on Who Are These Podcasts this week? Right now, you can check out Who Are These Podcasts. We did a show called Canceled with Tana Mojo. Oh, that was a great show. She, I love that show. Yeah. She is a YouTuber, and they had Matt Reif on, so we were talking about that. Pat Oates was my guest. I haven't had Pat on in a long time. He's fantastic. Really funny. And uh, we discovered a woman named Brooke Schofield. Woo! And wow, wowie, Kazowie, Brooke Schofield, holy! 
I, Carl, I, I looked up Tana Manjiao because I'm like, where does Carl find these people? And I see she's got hundreds of thousands of views on that. I'm like, how in the world? It's so bizarre to see these people in their little corners of the internet. I don't understand how these YouTubers catch on. So Pat Oates' daughter, who's in her 20s, is a fan of Tana. So I was talking to Pat about it, and he goes, yeah, and my daughter says that she's she's real, and she talks about real life, and she's not fake. I'm like, isn't that what all these YouTubers are, though? I don't know how yes. some of them catch on. And, and most of them don't. It doesn't make any sense. It would be really interesting to be starting, I mean, to be at that age right now. I can't imagine what it would take to uh, to get a following, but it'd be fun to try because it, it happens for so many people, and it doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. But no, uh, that's no. a great episode to watch if you haven't seen it on Who These Podcasts. And uh, good episode, Carl. We'll, we'll, catch you, uh, we'll catch you next time. Yes, for sure. I just want to uh, promote, I have a new show on my channel, Who Are These Broadcasters? Yeah. Uh, I'm the producer of it. I'm not actually on the show. Uh, yeah. So we have Christian Blatt and Eric Zane are the two hosts of the show. And it's Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. We also have our own feed. So if you like the podcast, you want to listen to it, you can uh, you can find that wherever you listen to podcasts. But uh, they're really hitting their stride. I was watching the show today. They're doing a fantastic job. So uh, if you guys like, they, they, they go over... You know, some political pundits, some talk shows, local news, sports broadcasting, everything in the world of broadcasting uh, they bring to the show. It's a, no, it's a, it's a great concept, and uh, I, I knew they'd find their legs. I haven't watched it in a couple of weeks, but I'll check it out. Yeah, it's, it's really good, so check that out, guys. All right, Carl. Do. Thanks, Carl. See Thanks ya. So much. All right. Brooke, Brooke Schofield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google it.